physical geography the solar system and the earth some millions of stars form milky way it is also called akasha ganga the sun is the nearest star to the earth the sun is a burning sphere of gases the sun nine planets 162 satellites and a number of invisible asteroids are together called the solar system asteroids are also known as planetoids the earth is one among the nine planets the sun is 1.3 million times bigger than the earth the sun is in the center of the solar system and all planets satellites and planetoids revolve around the sun among the nine planets mercury is the nearest planet to the sun next to it in the order are venus earth mars jupiter saturn uranus neptune and pluto moon is the satellite of the earth the average distance between the earth and the moon is 384365 kilometers jupiter is the biggest in size of all the planets and next comes saturn the earth is the fifth biggest and pluto is the smallest planet there are many hypotheses about the origin of the solar system among them planetesimal hypothesis put forth by camberlain and molten is widely accepted 2 the movements of the earth and their effects the earth has two movements they are one earth moves around its own axis from west to east at a speed of 1610 kilometers per hour this movement is called rotation an imaginary line which connects the north pole and the south pole through the center of the earth is called the axis day and night are caused due to earth's rotation in the process of rotation the portion lit by sun's rays gradually goes into darkness and the dark portion gradually goes into light the earth also moves around the sun while moving around its axis This movement is called revolution. The fixed and regular path through which earth revolves around the sun is called orbit. This orbit is elliptical in shape. Earth takes 1 year to complete one revolution. A normal year consists of 365 days only. The remaining 1/4 of the day is added once in 4 years and that year is known as leap year. hence a leap year consists of 366 days the distance between the earth and the sun is not constant as the earth's orbital path is elliptical in shape the farthest position of the earth from the sun is known as the aphelion and the closest position is known as the perihelion on march 21st the rays of the sun fall vertically on the equator on june 21st on the tropic of cancer on september 23rd again on the equator and on december 22nd on the tropic of capricorn as the sun appears vertically overhead at noon on the equator on march 21st and september 23rd the lengths of day and nights are equal all over the world on those two days hence these two days are known as equinoxes interior of the earth it is difficult for man to know directly about the earth's interior the radius of the earth if that the distance from the upper part to the center of the earth is 6440 kilometers he could send pipes for petroleum up to a depth of 600 kilometers so there are no direct evidences about the structure of the earth through these particulars it is established that temperature increases 
at a rate of 1 centigrade for every 32 meters in the interior of the earth. But it is estimated that the temperature at the center of the earth will be 6000 degrees only. There are some layers in the earth. The materials in the upper layers are different from those of the lower layers. These layers differ from one another in thickness and also in their physical and chemical composition. Depending on the presence of chief chemical substances in those layers, they are named as follows. 1. Seal. This is the uppermost layer of the earth. A mixture of silica and aluminium mainly exists in this layer. 2. Sima. This underlies the seal. A mixture of silica and magnesium mainly contained in this layer, so it is named as Sima. 3. Knife. This is the third layer underlying the Sima up to the center of the earth. Only nickel and iron are predominantly found here, so this layer is named as Knife. Latitudes and Longitudes. As the earth is spherical in shape, it is difficult to identify specific location of a place. North Pole and South Pole are fixed points on the earth. So latitudes and longitudes are drawn basing on them. Latitudes A circle drawn over the earth's surface exactly at equal distances from North Pole and South Pole is called the equator. It is also known as zero degree latitude. Equator divides the earth into two equal halves. The half sphere that lies to north of the equator is known as northern hemisphere and that which lies to south of its southern hemisphere. The circles drawn parallel to equator at one degree interval are known as latitudes. They are also known as parallels. There are 90 latitudes in each of the northern and southern hemisphere. All the latitudes are imaginary lines only. Longitudes The circles drawn across the globe passing through poles intersecting the equator are called circles of longitudes. In fact, the semicircles that lie between two poles are considered longitudes. All places situated on any longitude experience midday at a single point of time. Hence longitudes are also known as meridians. The longitude that passes through Greenwich in London is taken as zero degree longitude. This is called Greenwich longitude. It is also known as prime meridian. There are 180 degrees longitudes each eastwards and westwards. The area between Greenwich longitude and 180 degrees east longitude is known as Eastern Hemisphere. Longitudes like latitudes are also imaginary lines. All latitudes are parallel to each other, but all longitudes converge at poles. Uses it is easy to locate any place over the earth with the help of latitudes and longitudes. 2. As the rays of the sun do not fall vertically beyond the tropics climate of a place can be identified with the help of latitudes. 3. While rotating across its own axis, it takes 4 minutes for earth to cross a distance of 1 degree interval. So differences in time in different places of the earth can be noticed with the help of a longitude. Eclipses The earth revolves around the sun and that the moon revolves around the earth. While they so revolve at times it happen that they come in a straight line, then either solar eclipse or lunar eclipse occurs. Lunar eclipse When the earth obstructs sun's rays from falling on moon it is called lunar eclipse. Solar eclipse. When the moon obstructs sun's rays from falling on earth, it is called solar eclipse. Solar eclipse occurs only on new moon days.